Most important concept when you start talking about utilization of nutrients is going to be maintenance. You know, maintenance is, I think we listed four or five things on the board, but you know, before we can grow, before we can lactate, before a fetus can grow, before muscle can develop, we have to have enough nutrients for us to use for maintenance. And a lot of times our maintenance rations include, um, you know, we're looking at roughly 2% of their body weight. And so where we talk 2,000, uh, 2,500 calories on a recommended daily allowance for people, when it comes to animals, we talk about 2% of their body weight for maintenance. And a lot of times, whatever we add on to that from then on is, is what's going to give us the extra gain and performance and growth, et cetera, that we're pushing for. So the four processes, four or five processes that we discuss that go into maintenance, you know, we've got to continue to breathe. So diaphragm, lung, respiration is all a key component. In addition, another TION is circulation. We've got to have blood that transports oxygen to tissues, transports nutrients to tissues, and waste products away from tissues. Also, we have a brain function. And so, you know, we have to make sure the body will sit and take stores, take nutrients from other aspects um, in order to make sure that the brain continues to function correctly. Um, so we talked basically that the process of digestion as well. So energy for those vital functions that we need, whether we maintain body temp, we push it, we pull it. Uh, if we need to sit and generate more heat for us to stay warm, um, or whether we need to dissipate heat. We talked about sweating and we talked about panning uh, ways for us to get rid of heat uh, for animals or to maintain a cooler body temp. In addition, protein for tissue repair. Um, it's ongoing just about every night while we're sleeping. Then after that, in young growing animals, uh, growth is going to come in. Um, Pretty much, we discussed in class, probably all of us at this point in our life, our growth plates have sealed. And so we're not going to have any more skeletal growth, bone growth, but the same token, we can have um, muscle growth. And so for an animal, once they kind of get to that point where they've maximized skeletal growth, they start depositing more muscle. And then ultimately, they're gonna get into a fattening component. And so as we get older and animals get older, we've maximized our skeletal growth, our growth plates have sealed. We've maximized their genetic potential for muscle. So we talk about people, we have an opportunity to work out and to alter that, animals don't. So we see that difference on it there. And then ultimately, whatever biological functions, and that was a pretty cool pig, but whether we're gonna work, whether it's gonna be a performance animal, whether you have to lactate, and we have differences. You have some females that give way more milk than others. Um, some chickens give way more eggs than others. And so depending upon our metabolisms as well as to what our needs are and what we have to do for our maintenance functions as well as to accomplish our goals for production afterwards. So factors affect the nutrient utilization. We talked a um, little bit about species of animal, but ruminant animals, you know, consuming some grass, they'll they'll have be a little more efficient on some things, a little less efficient on some others. The one key one that I would make sure I remember for the quiz and be able to explain is is age. Young animals are more efficient in the processes. So that's in digestion, absorption, they are growing, so they are gonna use more nutrients. And once they get to a certain point, they don't need as many. But while they're young, they need more nutrients and they're going to be more efficient in all of those processes. Physiological state, pretty obvious there. You know, if she's lactating and nursing um, a baby, um, in the case of a cow, she may be pregnant again in gestation for another calf for next year while still lactating on one of them. So physiological state certainly going to change those needs and requirements. Plane of nutrition is another one that I would make sure I understand completely. And where we talked level of intake, 
a lot of athletes, bodybuilders, etc., are going to eat a lot smaller meals, but more throughout the day. And by eating smaller meals throughout the day, five or six times, they're going to be more efficient with digestion with a smaller amount. We talk about fasting intake, people that don't eat, let's say maybe a thousand calories a day, your body's going to utilize just about every single one of those um, and be way more efficient versus those that go to Mr. Gaddy's or you go to the buffet and then you turn around and eat over or over consume. It goes back to that same metabolic chart. Body absorbs, it digests, it absorbs. We get all kinds of blood glucose. We're forcing it into the cells, insulin's out, and all of a sudden the body says, no mas. And so absorption from the digestive tract is shortened. And so a lot of the rest of that goes out the back as feces. And so it's wasted. A lot of times if we consume excessive amounts, we're going to be um, less effective or less efficient in what's utilized, and there's going to be a lot more waste. A lot less in terms of amounts are spread better throughout the day, um, more throughout the day, then we're going to be more efficient in terms of utilization. Environment, a uh, key component. Hey, I pulled that picture going, hey, guys, if we're up there, we're in the snow, they're going to burn a whole lot more calories to try to sit there and maintain their body weight. Uh